Hey, you are now live. Okay, thanks, Christina. Okay, I'll call the meeting to order. Welcome everyone in our midst tonight. I'd ask for approval of the uh, agenda. Moved by Merrill, thank you. Seconded by, by Dieter, thank you. All those in favor? Gary? <clears throat> Any additions or, or deletions to the agenda? Let the record show there are none. Any declarations, conflict of interest, or general nature thereof? Are there any? No. Let the record show there are none. Where's Bob? We don't have Bob. We're, we're, we're missing Bob. We, we did have him. Christina, is there any uh, any way on your end that uh, member surgeon? Oh, he's back. You're there, are you, Bob? You're on mute, Bob. We had a bit of a hiccup. It's okay, okay now. You, you okay yeah. now? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Had to call oh, it space. Lost I asked, space. For, I asked for a declaration or conflict of interest or general nature of are there any? No. Let the record show there are none. Adoption of, of the minutes of uh, September the 29th. Do we have a mover and a seconder? Bob. Moved by Bob. Thank you. Seconded by Dieter. Thank you. Uh, any discussion, errors, or omissions in, in the minutes? Let the record show there are none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, and also, too, I'd like to recognize that Aaron will not be in our midst tonight. She will maybe not, not at the meeting. Okay, we'll go to severance application B19-2021. Norman Tina Brown. We discussed this one at our last meeting that we had, and we asked for more direction from the Quinty Conservation Authority. Uh, the direction that we got really didn't amount to much. Anyhow, anyone have any discussion, concerns, comments? I guess I'll start with the committee members first, and then I'll ask Norm if he has anything to say. Any committee members have any questions, concerns? No. No. Norm, do you have, have any comments or concerns? You must be on mute, Norm. There we are. Are we there now? Yep. Okay. Um, I got the same thing. I talked to Quinny. I called, um, was talking to Sam Carney and I was talking to Mark Boone and um, they, uh, they have said the same thing you did that they just have a recommendation or they go like on a topographical map and say this, but they said uh, they will never um, implement something like this. It's up to the township. And with, I had a lengthy discussion with him and he said the biggest thing is knowing the area. Um, if it's a area where you're gonna have problems or if it's an area where there's an abundance of water, it's, he said it's up to the township. So that's why I was asking him. He said they won't step out and on their own and give a yes or no. I don't, and that's my talking with them. Well, my my take on it was that the, that's, they were recommending the, the hydro G study. Correct me if I'm wrong, Jason. That, that that that's correct, Chairperson Clancy. We have an email dated October 25th from from Mark Boone, who's the hydrogeologist at the package this evening for committee, um, and it it says. <clears throat> essentially what both of you are saying, Mr. Brown and Mr. Clancy. So let me let me just read it. 
Hello, Jason. I believe we spoke on the phone about this one, and it indicated that the proposed lot meet the lot density test for five or more lots within four hectares on four hectares within 300 meters. Based on this, we recommend a hydro G study with, but the ultimate decision rests with the municipality. So I, I, I say that in that Chairperson Clancy's comment as it relates to the recommendation, the professional recommendation of the hydrogeologist at Quinney Conservation Authority is that this application necessitates the completion of a hydro G study. Mr. Brown, you are also correct in your comment that the municipal or the Quinty Conservation Authority is providing a professional recommendation to the municipality as a as a land as a hydrogeologist and myself as a professional planner or land use planner who provides consolidated recommendation to the committee of adjustment is is incorporating that as a recommendation as I'm not a hydrogeologist to contest or overturn the recommendation of theirs. And to Mr. Uh, Mr. Boone's comment, the ultimate decision does rest with the municipality. It ultimately does rest with the committee who you are before this evening. Um, the committee of adjustment makes the ultimate decision as it relates to land use planning in this regard for consent approval. Uh, and the recommendation before them this evening is that the application to sever this parcel be approved with the, with the condition or inclusion of, of a hydro G assessment based on the recommendations of the Conservation Authority. And again, that, that's summarized within the documentation provided on the portal for, for committee and members of the public this evening. Thank you. Also too, back in, in 2014, uh, there was a severance of Frizzell's that had, they had to do the, the hydro G study, right, Jason? Thank you. And three, you, Mr. Chair, it's summarized within the planning report. It, it was an application that originated in 2014 and was finalized in 2019. Um, the recommendation was that a hydrogeologic study be complete, hydrogeological study be completed. Uh, and the applicant in that, in that case hired a company called Geologic um, and they completed a study um, which, which was completed by a geotechnical engineer. It, in my opinion, it, it, it wasn't a full hydro G study as it relates to assessing quality and quantity of water on, on the property. It was more of a, an engineer's report to determine the appropriateness of development on that severed parcel. And, and that was a, a, essentially an occlusion based on the official plan policy that we have at the municipality. Um, the recommendation th this evening is that based on a recommendation from Quinney Conservation that the hydrogeological assessment be completed that focuses more on water production or, or quality and quantity of water um, in support of this proposed severance as opposed to um, an engineer's report from a geotechnical perspective, which is what the Frizzells completed um, through application uh, B12-2014. That said, yes, the policy in the, in the official plan was upheld uh, in that previous consent application in that it, in, a, in a technical study was required to be completed. It was not as though that application was completed in the complete absence of an assessment by a qualified professional. Anybody have any, any questions, concerns, comments? Yeah, I, uh, I apologize. I apologize for the last time I had internet uh, connection problems. And so my, uh, my concerns the last time were simply um, what, uh, what types of problems might arise if you didn't do the study for uh, the owner of the property as well as the township. It, 
through you, Mr. Chair. Member Fenwick's question is is a it's a great question, and I can answer it to the best of my ability, recognizing that I'm not a qualified hydrogeologist, including that of Mark Boone. That said, my understanding of the the requirement of a hydrogeology study that is being requested in this example is to look at considerations of both quantity and quality of groundwater. Um, Mr. Brown has already drilled a well on this severed proposed severed lot and has uh, water quantity records that indicates there's there's water water quantity availability for servicing a single family dwelling. What this study would do would assess that water out of the proposed well on the severed lot and then look at drawdown rates on neighboring wells with what they call data loggers um, by doing a pump test on that severed lot and then assessing the drawdown effect on neighboring wells, they would have an understanding as to if there's any adverse effect on the groundwater and the water table on any neighboring house as a result of this new proposed severed lot. Further to that, the water, that's the, qual that's the quantity component of the, of the hydro G assessment. The quality assessment looks at the D55 which is the MOE requirement for, for drinking water standards. Um, and it does an asset and it completes through an assessment to the appropriateness of that water for, for drinking water standards. Um, and all of that is wrapped into what's what's called the hydrogeological study and, and reviewed by Mark Boone as, as a as a reviewer once the study is completed, not the not, you know, the township employees, including myself or or, or Cindy or Brooklyn. Um, in my experience, the concern of a municipality not instilling the requirement of a hydrogeological study when there's a professional recommendation of suggesting that it be required would be in the future if there is no that if there is then a, an, an adverse effect, on the severed lot from a water taking perspective or drinking water standard or an adverse effect on a neighboring well as a result of that new lot creation, the municipality, um, there's, record, there's potential recourse on the municipality based on the failure to include that condition. Um, the, 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 in my opinion, the committee of adjustment would then be it, it would be a requirement for the committee to call, to to demonstrate why a hydrogeology uh, study was not required when a professional at Quinney Conservation Quinney Conservation Authority and the township staff advised that that study be completed. If that makes if that makes sense, thank you. It does. It does make sense. Uh... Yeah, uh, the neighbors would be upset if uh, if they discovered that their quantity of water, never mind the quality, <laughs> uh, went down, and uh, and that was not followed by um, ourselves and the uh, the owner of the proposed lot. So I guess we'd all be uh, uh, looking at some upset people. Anyone else have a comment, concern, question? Yeah, just just uh, my own my own feeling. I, I know that, that as as we dense, densify uh, severances in, in the township, this issue is not going to go away. As a matter of fact, I mean, I remember even years ago, when long long before I was ever involved in the committee, but involved in severances with clients. Uh, most of my most of the dealings, uh, some of the things were neighbors complaining about a new well being drilled next door, which will adversely adversely affect my water supply. And I know that's in, in, in a number of severances that, that I shepherded for clients. That issue has been coming up, and that was like maybe ten or fifteen years ago already. And it seems to be more prevalent as time goes on. So uh, I tend to think that. Uh, these things are important. They should be done, 
and um, basically, you know, if these things aren't done, and well, not not that they're done, but if we ignore the recommendations, and something does go wrong, or there are problems, then you know, uh, that that throws back on the municipality, saying, well, why didn't you do this when you should have done it because you were asked to do it and it was part of the conditions, and now we got all all these problems, so. Uh, I'm, my opinion is that you know, these conditions, if they're recommended by the hydrologists, uh, I, I, I don't see how we should be able to say, well, no, I don't think, uh, you know, it, it's in the interest of the, of the, uh, of the person doing the severances, uh, you know, because they don't want to do them, that, that we should say, well, yeah, we'll agree with you. I don't think you should do them. I think we should stick with the recommendations. That's my opinion. Anyone else? As much as I don't want to go along with the recommendation, uh, uh, what's come up tonight, I think we don't have a choice. I would add, I would add that I empathize with Mr. Brown over the, um, you know, it, it is costly to, uh, to sever a lot with all of the costs involved. And now this on top of it. So I I understand I I understand his reluctance to spend that money, particularly yeah, when he's already drilled the well, and you know things seem to be good. And you know he has the argument that he's had a neighbor who's done it and not had to do the study. Uh, I'm not familiar with that, uh, but at the same time, it is true that we've had a professional opinion and. Uh, I'm a long way from a hydrological person for uh, any of that, well drillers or anyone else included. Um, I am a property owner, so I understand uh, how expensive it can be to, uh, to follow these things through. So, but I am thinking that we need to, plus I do think that as the owner of the property, um, it, it is expensive, but in the, in the long run, should there be anything that occurred, you can always say you did everything that you could to assure uh, your neighbors, et cetera, in the area that you were not interfering with any of their established wells. Well, I guess everyone knows how I felt at the last meeting that we had on this. I've I've given a, a terrible amount of consideration. I understand, Norm, where you're coming from, a, a, a extra cost factor. I know there's a 10 gallons a minute. There's a lot of water for, for a house. But also, too, I look at the possibly down the road, it is this hydro G study is going to probably be, could be good insurance for you and the municipality if something should happen to your neighbor, uh, their well goes dry and they start pointing the finger at you that uh, because of that new well that's there, has caused their well to, to go dry. And if a hydro G study is done and everything is up to par, then everybody has done due diligence and nobody will be, will be held liable. Uh, <coughs> I... I, I, like I said, you, you know what my opinion was at the last meeting, but uh, over the period of time and, and studying into it and looking at the recommendation from, <clears throat> excuse me, the Conservation Authority, I I would have to go go along with it. I, only my thoughts. Uh, I feel the same as Bob. I last meeting I would have voted against it, but with the conversation from the Conservation Authority now, I think I have to go for it. Okay, people, I guess we've had, do you have anything further to add, Norm, before we, we go on? Um, just one thing, like if it's uh, an issue on quality, like as, as part of it, should that not be implemented on every single well going forward, every severance? Because if you go on quantity, like for a built up area, but if we're talking or quality of water, that should be something that's um, implemented on every well going forward because 
if we're concerned about this well for quality, we should be concerned on every other well. Does that not make sense? That's a, that's a great point, Mr. Brown. It, it's, uh, it is taken into consideration. Um, and as part of a, a well drillers report um, in any other situation that is not requiring a full hydro G study, there is a, a, a ministry D55 assessment that's required. And most typically, I, you'll see them completed by McClellan Water Services. Um, but that, that assessment does demonstrate how the, the qual, quant, sorry, quality testing meets or doesn't meet the requirements of the ministry. Um, and that uh, it recommends specific mitigation measures that can be engineered solutions into um, treating certain parameters as required. So it, that, that is a standard condition. Um, the reason it's not worded such in your, or in this recommendation specifically, is it is considered and fulsomely accommodated under the hydrogeology recommendation. Yeah, I was, I was going to say, <clears throat> Jason, as long as I can remember, we've asked for the D55 recommendation quantity and quality. It's always been a, it's always been a, a requirement in, in the past, Norm. Yeah. Because I just go on by the old, I guess the old school of what there is and uh, for quantity and quality with the, the drill, the well drillers experience. Um, I don't know. I just it, it does kind of baffle me, I guess, with because uh, it seems like I, when I was talking to uh, Mark, it's we nobody wants to make the commitment, be like he said, because that way we can put the blame on the next guy. So that's all. It just seems pretty. That's why they won't step up. They can give the recommendation, but. Now this way, he says, like they can kind of walk away, and it's on the township shoulders now. If anything goes wrong, not just this one by any means, but all, all wells going forward, or anything that's given this one, like he's, it belongs to the township now. So like, I see, we can see do what we can do. That's, I see Aaron has joined us. <laughs> Well, welcome to our midst, Aaron. Thank you. Sorry for the day. My apologies to the applicants and the committee members. Do you have any? Do you hear any of the discussion? Do you have any concerns or questions uh, on this one, Aaron? Before we carry on. Um, unfortunately, I missed a fair chunk of it. It sounds as if um, Jason reiterated kind of the need for um, the hydro G study. Mm-hmm. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So oh. three, Mr. Conti, just quickly, um, for the sake of Ms. O'Gara, the information has been uploaded to the portal, as you're aware. There's comments in which we deferred to allow for Mark Boone to, pro Boone, sorry, to provide further comment from Quinney Conservation. He has done so, and his opinion as a professional hydrogeologist is that the study be completed. However, recognizes that that decision is is that of the of the municipality, um, which in essence, for this sake of this meeting and conversation and decision, it's the sake of the meeting to be decided upon by the committee of adjustment. Um, I've also provided a bit of information, or we, sorry, collectively have provided a bit of information as it relates to uh, Mr. Frizzell's application, which was in the vicinity uh, along Frizzell Road in 2014 and 2019 and the requirements in which that applicant was required to complete through the processing of that application. Um, not to reiterate everything, I just wanted to just give you that quick update. Yes, thank you. Yeah, I, I, I don't feel it's, it's really necessary for to do the hydro G study, but also too with the complications that could end up down the road and the liability that could happen. I, I think it, it has to has to be done. Uh, uh, I will ask for a mover and a second there, for, uh, and, and a motion for to approve uh, all the, with all the conditions attached with 
with a hydro G study. Yes, Bob. Yeah, that's. I was going to put the motion on for. Okay. Do I have a seconder? Aaron. <clears throat> Any further discussion? Concerns? No. All those in favor? Aye. Okay, it's a unanimous. Have a good evening, Norm. You too. Okay. Now to the next one. Craig, is it? All right, we're on to A12-2021, Craig. Do we have someone on board for that one to represent? I, through you, I, I can see nine participants. If the nine participants in which I can see are the only ones on this evening's call, there is not um, Mr. or Mrs. Craig present. I can speak to the application. Go for it. Uh, so through you, Mr. Clancy, uh, A12 2021 submitted by Mr. and Mrs. Craig is, is, a, is a minor variance application as it relates to the replacement of a sewage disposal system. And it's unique and there may be question or there should be question in my mind as to why the applicant is maybe here this evening seeking this approval when the installation has already been completed. Um, this application is in the heart of Newburgh, 397, 393 Main Street, uh, in very close proximity to the Napanee River. It's a constrained parcel that's got two single family dwellings on the parcel, um, which are legal non-conforming in the date in which they were constructed. The parcel, as mentioned, is undersized and they had a failure of the existing septic system that was posing environmental concern based on the proximity of neighboring houses, neighboring municipal facilities, and most importantly, the neighboring um, water course, the Napanee River. There was an expedited replacement that commenced for the installation of a septic, or sorry, yeah, a new septic. As, as you're aware, our, fundamental in protecting the health of our of our natural environment as there is essentially no septage or effluent released um, and based on the physical constraints of the parcel separation setbacks from wells etc a holding tank was the only option from a sewage disposal system that the applicant could install um, permitting was issued through the township of stone mill septic uh, septic compliance officer, our chief building official, as well as permitting from the Quinney Conservation Authority for an expedited review. We're here before you this evening to essentially retroactively obtain committee of adjustment approval for the reduction in the water setback um, based on this unfortunate event. And the, the rationale from, from my position, from a planning perspective, is that we provided expediated approval with an affidavit executed, signed by the, uh, the owner, confirming that they would seek committee approval to ensure that their subject property is in compliance with the township zoning bylaw 2014-744, and that there is then no discrepancies into the future. For example, when the parcel is sold or changed possession, um, when there's an installation of a new septic system in 2021 and no, no municipal approval granted from a committee of adjustment perspective, um, there's going to be concern or red flag potentially by new, new purchasers. Hence the reason we're here seeking retroactive, if, we, if, you, if you may, uh, approval as it relates to a water setback. I'm, I'm happy to answer any further question. Thank you. Yeah, you know, we're we're asked to make an, an approval of something that's already been been done, but it was very necessary to to have it done uh, in, under the under the circumstances. And that's my opinion. Anyone else have a concern? I have no problem approving this. It's rectified a, a serious problem there, and they've done the best they can with what they've got. So 
I'd put the motion on the floor to accept it. We have a seconder. Peter, thank you. <clears throat> any any other concerns, questions from anyone? All those in favor? Carried unanimously. Thank you. Next one is A15-2021, Taylor. Ms. Ms. Taylor is with us this evening, Chairperson. And she's here, is she? Okay. You want to give us a little preamble, Jason? Certainly. Application uh, A15 2021 submitted by uh, Ms. Robin Taylor relates to the property known municipally as 153 Neville Point Road. It's a waterfront property um, that, based on current standard, is considered undersized. Uh, and it was long developed with a single family dwelling, which unfortunately um, was the result of a fire, a fatal fire in 2020 um, that destroyed sorry, the entirety of, of the building. The applicant is seeking committee of adjustment approval to reconstruct, I'm not sure, to reconstruct a single family dwelling in approximately the same location on the subject property. There are modifications to the proposed build compared to what was formerly existing on site. And the two most notable amendments are the replacement of the sewage disposal system is one with a full conventional septic system that's located um, the tank adjacent to the house within hundred feet of the water However, the bed located to the rear of the, the cottage um, in, a, in a compliant 100 foot water setback location. Secondly, the proposed single family dwelling that is to be reconstructed has been increased in size um, based on the inclusion of a, of a basement as well as a slightly, well, an increased deck, open uncovered deck that goes across the front of the build, as well as down the western side of the proposed dwelling. Um, on the floor plans and all building permit drawings that have been submitted to date, the inclusion of a covered deck adjacent to the water has been identified as part of the reconstruction. A site meeting with Ms. Taylor's builder the Quinty, Quinty Conservation Authority representation, as well as myself and development services clerk, Cindy Hike, identified this as a, as a concern as it essentially worsens the former setback from a water setback and top of bank setback perspective and creates additional gross floor area based on the definition of our, of our zoning bylaw for structure with the inclusion of a roof. Staff are recommending through this approval this evening that this proposed redevelopment be approved, notwithstanding the covered deck that is adjacent to the water and in close proximity to the high water mark, based on Quinney Conservation Authority's recommendation, as well as staff's recommendation of worsening an existing situation from a water setback perspective, as opposed to bettering. One of the key components of this that I would like to discuss is the way in which we're proposing to approve this reconstruction. And it's through application for permission, which is section 45.2 of the Planning Act, as opposed to specific minor variances, which are, section, which are, are included under section 45.1 of the Planning Act. And the reason for doing so is the use Although the use is not legal non-conforming in that the property is zoned to permit a residential build or a single family dwelling, and that was what was always constructed on site, the location of the existing or former single family dwelling was non-compliant. The location of the original septic system and holding tank was non-compliant, and the applicant is seeking to expand that former non-complying located single family dwelling. 
through the increased floor area of the dwelling, as well as the increased floor area of the deck, as well as the redevelopment of a sewage system. So in, in our opinion as staff, there were multiple ways in which we could seek to review this application. However, fulsomely wrapping into the consideration of the applicant's proposal is to reconstruct a single family dwelling in approximately the same location on site as the former in which Quinney Conservation Authority is satisfied and the proposal seeks to construct a new sewage disposal system further from the water than the former, the municipality is of the opinion that this is good land use planning and meets the, meets the criteria of section 45.2 of the Planning Act for permission to expand that legal non-conforming use in its location in close proximity to the water. I'm happy to answer any questions in which you may have. Thank you. Anyone have any questions or concerns for Jason? Yeah. yeah. Yes, Nader. Yeah. The, uh, <clears throat> the proposal is that the uh, covered deck be, be removed, but does that mean they can't build just a regular deck? That's what I was getting at. I noticed on the, on the plan that the, there was a deck there further closer to the water, the original deck, and they're proposing to have that deck at the front uh, further back from the water. Um, but if it's not a covered deck, can they still build a regular deck? Or, my, or, or completely off the table? My, my apologies, Mr. Eberhardt, for that. Um, absolutely. The permission is to allow for a full uncovered deck in that location, it's simply to exclude the projection of that gable roof over that portion of decking. Um, I, I should have been clear with that. My apologies. Okay, that's uh, that, that's good. It's good. I did, you know, it wouldn't third. It wouldn't be nice not to have a deck out front overlooking the water. So, anyone else? No. No. Well, I guess I'd have to say. For, with what has been proposed, it's a big, a big improvement over what was there, and we all know what it's like around these lakes anymore for, for septic systems and, and what have you. Anyhow, I'd ask for a motion for approval. I'll make a motion to approve. Moved by Dieter, seconded by Aaron. Anyone have any concerns or questions before we I call for the the vote? No. All those in favor. Aye. Aye. Carried unanimously. Thank you. Okay, our next our next one is A16-2021 Edwards. Chairperson Clancy, I don't believe uh, Mr. or Mrs. Edwards Don't see them in the in the gallery. Um, however, there was recent. I've had recent communication, and they're very interested. It's I believe it's a technological challenge, and and not residing here within the township for to, to for able ability to be present. Um, I'm I'm happy. To, I can answer questions or speak to the application uh, as well. Anyone have any questions or concerns for through Jason? No, not really. It, uh, I was there yesterday. I was talking with the owner's son uh, who was there with his family. And he showed me the existing uh, uh, tank, which would be replaced, and then the existing pile bit area, um, which they have to enlarge, I guess. But it uh, seems pretty pretty reasonable to me. And, and the relief they're seeking is only six meters. So it's still quite a long way from the water. So. Certainly don't see any problems or any concerns with what they're planning on doing. Yes, Jason. My, my apologies. I The one piece of information I forgot I want to mention, there was two pieces of correspondence, telephone com communications received from neighbors related to this application, neither of which have fundamental concern with the redevelopment of any sort, but they received notification they wanted to emphasize the importance of the 
of the area in, in their opinion from a natural heritage perspective. Um, they've, they've received the notification via mail and they just wanted to, to thank the municipal staff for providing that opportunity for input and, and relay that commentary to the committee um, for at, at, tonight's, at tonight's meeting. Okay, we, we need a motion to approve. Moved by Bob, <clears throat> seconded by Merrill. <clears throat> Any further discussion, concerns? No. All, all those in favor? Carried unanimously, thank you. Okay, our last one is, is Hendrickson. I would ask for a motion of deferral because we do not have uh, any comment back from the Quinty Conservation Authority. I understand they were there today, but we don't have any anything back from them. So I would ask for a deferral to our next meeting on this one. Moved by Aaron, seconded by Bob. <clears throat> All those in favor? Gary, thank you. Other business, do we have any, any other business other than the fact that to get around um, signing, signing of this, Jason? I don't have any other business um, other than the fact we have a few applicants and the most recently deferred application, of course, one of those uh, in which is seeking consideration of the committee um, we may be looking for a meeting to be scheduled in advance of the Christmas vacation sort of season. Um, so I just wanted to make sure, put that on the, on the radar of, of members. Um, and as we know, we have some decisions this evening that need to be signed. So I, I wanted to make everyone aware of that in that we'll, we can finalize these and, and obtain Chairperson Clancy's signature this evening. Uh, here at the office, and we will coordinate uh, as we typically do for, for others. Um, we can, if there's no other items, we can close the, the meeting in the stream to, to YouTube, but I don't want to take that away from the committee itself. So I just wanted to make sure that we had opportunity to discuss that collectively um, from a sort of an administrative process as opposed to a, an application or a, or a municipal specific concern or comment that might be discussed. I, I would ask for an, an adjournment and then we can discuss this afterwards. Yeah, moved by Bob, seconded by, thanks Aaron. <clears throat> All those in favor? Okay, Christina, 